Hi, we're on today with Nikki Klegel, author of Awakening the Living Legacy and her newly released Embracing the Loving Legacy. Welcome, Nikki. Thank you for having me on here, Faye. I am so excited about being a part of this, and I feel honored that you even asked. I hope that it reaches some people's hearts. I think it will. I think it will. I love your books. I love your whole concept. Um, it really meshes well with mine, is wanting I to see know. people take what they've known and make something better from it, that they don't have to stay stuck in it. Yeah. And so first of all, let's talk about your life as an author. Um, when you're writing... Okay. When you're writing, does that exhaust you or energize you? No, it energizes me um, with the messaging. It exhausts me with um, the skill. <clears throat> and isn't it funny that God would potentially, uh, so I say that for you, but he's absolutely done it for me, but take what you're weakest at and make it be the place where he shines the most. and. I have dyslexia, or at least we'll say a reading disorder, and really it's hard. People don't know just how bad they see my ears, and they think, wow, she's sloppy, or she's not paying attention, or gosh, didn't she see this? And what they don't know is that actually I labored over writing that, not the idea, the, the, the writing, and then there were probably 10 to 20 times that, that, er that many errors. And so is it hard for me to write? Yes. But the, the ideas that I have to put out there are God-given and they come in flashes. Um, I wrote this book really in two chunks. I, in October, <clears throat> I went to a retreat center, locked myself in there. There was no one there. It was, you know, winter months. And um, I wrote half of it. And then uh, about two months later, I took two Monday and Tuesdays and I wrote the other half. So wow. I, I just sit down and zoom. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. So what was an early experience where you learned that language, that words have power? Yeah, I mean, my mom, um, she, she learned that words had power and she shared it with us. Um, she wasn't necessarily uh, spoken over very positively, and so it affected her, and she worked really hard to do the opposite with us and to try to speak life over us, and so it was good, and I, I understood that, but I knew the power of words really from God at an age when I really didn't even know God. I I really didn't get a relationship with God until I was older, but he had one with me and I didn't know it when I was younger. I mean, I, I felt it. I just didn't understand what it was, but the Holy Spirit and God spoke words into me, um, affirmations and insight and understanding that I knew young, like crazy things happened. And I was able to them based on these, um, kind of knowings and, um, and, and that we say words like a lot of people say, does God talk to you? And somebody will say, no, I mean, I never hear words, but he surely talks. And so right. I don't. So, yeah, I guess words are powerful. And I think even from God, even more so. And I love that I'm tapping into that now. <laughs> Great. Um, is there an author that you truly admire? Well, um, I admire so many, but um, I don't want this to be cliche but I'm going to say the Bible and the authors that wrote the Bible because that is the oldest book and it's still relevant today. And how do you do that? Right. 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 It's like somebody knew something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I always like how we, we come out with these really cool and famous things like neuroplasticity or something. And, and, you know, we're like, you, you know, we knew this ahead of time, you know, they have scans now that prove that where, what we, we think we can change our thoughts and our life and everything. And they say, oh, you know, now we have cat, scan, cat scans to prove what we knew in the 70s. Oh my gosh, what about Romans 12 too? That was not, <laughs> that we've known that forever. Right, right. We've known that since the first century. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you said that you wrote uh, Embracing Your Legacy, The Loving Legacy in two chunks. Was there anything that you had to edit out? 
know, I had to put stuff in and that's definitely the way it goes with me is I usually, um, whoever edits my book will usually force me to write more personal stuff. And my inclination is to sort of leave that out. Now I do think I learned my lesson. I did a little better with this one, but still that was what the editor had said. Can you add, add more in about, you know, your, yourself. Right. Right. I'm bad about writing the facts in a novel of all things, the facts and forget the descriptions. Not a good combination. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I, so you're an you. awesome writer. Oh, thank you. What does literary success look like for you? Yeah. I mean, if you can take something that's black and white, we'll say most books are black and white and, um, and turn it into an inward impression that somebody has and then it turns into an outward expression. Like, I feel like we did our job. And the writing, I hope that that happens, that whatever God sort of put on my heart, I get it on ink, I get it in black and white on paper, but I don't want it to stay there. I want it to impress on them inwardly and I want it to go so far. It's almost like there's a word called Shema in the Bible where you hear, Oh, Israel, you hear so deeply that it changes you. And it's, it's almost a complete thought of like everything, um, getting it, understanding it and it coming back out. And so inward impression and outward is what I think. I love that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's, let's talk more about your book specifically. Yeah. Tell okay. us the backstory about it. So um, my book, this is book two in what's called the Legacy Series. And so the first book is called, and you kind of need to know this to make sense of this one. The first one is called Awaking the Living Legacy. And that book was about awaking, um, I was going to call the book the Jesus, and, um, and I changed it so more people would pick it up. But um, so it's Awaking the Living Legacy instead of Jesus Legacy. And that's about living um, saying that you are gods and understanding what the Trinity is and just really living within that. And it's a personal relationship with God. And I use that book to life coach. And it's funny when I was life coaching, I thought, Oh, I hope people goal set and achieve the things that they want. And, and as I started coaching and partnering their life with God, then all sorts of people would come to me for coaching. And I thought it was going to be middle-aged women, but it'd be married couples and it'd be people struggling with addictions or anxiety or whatever. And the same system of partnering your life with God was working on everything. It was healing marriages and, and fixing people's anxiety and stuff like this. So I, I just loved it. And then God whispered to me, you know, what the other books were at, at one time, he told me all four books. And so I'm the next one. And I thought, well, heck, I better get started. But it didn't happen. You know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't feel it. And, you know, I get those downloads where I just write in a day and nothing was coming. And he kept whispering to me two words and it was word and house. And I just didn't know what that meant. So I thought, well, maybe I'm supposed to teach people the word in my house. This is what we do, right? When right, we don't right. oh, try to step in and guess and stuff. So I brought people into my home and literally came a retreat. And it was called the WOW Retreat. And it was W-O-W, -W, Will of the Word. And so I would teach women the whole Bible in one weekend. And I loved it. It was so fun because so many of the people I coached and my friends, me included just a few years ago, um, had never read the Bible and don't, don't know it. And it's unfamiliar and it's not in people's homes. And so I just thought, okay, I'll do this. And they'd come on Thursday. The first group tried coming Friday and leaving Sunday morning and we didn't even get half done, but Thursday to Sunday. And they learned the whole Bible. Can you imagine like not knowing the Bible and mm -hmm. walking in a place with a crisp Bible that you don't even know where to turn to for what book? and you leave and you get the whole concept and you know, I mean, it's so awesome. But anyway, so then I was like, okay, God, I did that, nothing. And he kept whispering, same thing, word and house. And so I just kept trying to diligently walk in it and I ended up doing treats all over and it was growing. And then I started recording the Bible. I would read it out loud 
and I would record it and then put it into little PDFs or um, MP3s, and then people would listen over uh, the year and listen to the Bible in a year. Thought that was it. Nope, that's not it. And then finally, I hate to be so graphic, but this happens a lot. So finally, I was in the bathtub. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, it's when I finally slow down. But And then um, I said, like you, I just flat out asked. I said, you know, what does this mean? And what am I supposed to do? And he, and he gave me a verse. And it was, as for me and my house, I will love and serve the Lord. And I knew right away that that's what this book was supposed to be about. Because I knew the name. I knew the name was Embracing the Loving Legacy, but I had no idea how it would attach to house and, and that verse. And so that first book is all about getting life, your life, personal relationship with God partnered. And this is about getting your partnered with God and loving and serving God in your home. And every section of the book, there's six of them, is about a different area of your home and partnering it up with God. Um, life or your house, your marriage, your children, your finances, your health, and your community. Wow. It's kind of the long answer. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, I mean, I want, that's what I want. I want to hear the good stuff. So you've mentioned, you know, that this is about home and family. Tell us about the, the things that you see taking a great toll on our families. Yeah. So I say this even for myself. I mean, luckily, I think that this is the blessing with me as a coach for people I'm not perfect and they know it and I've been there and I just started walking deeply in my faith over the last three years. So I've been there and um, our Bibles, my husband and I kind of cracked when we first started all this because the binding was probably all dried out and never opened. Um, but it doesn't mean that I didn't teach my kids to be good. And it doesn't mean that I didn't teach them to know God or love God, of course. And I think people all over the world do that, but we're missing so much um, when we don't live it, our faith out and, and show that and teach that. And that's what Joshua, that verse is all about. It's like, um, he's sitting there saying, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to serve the gods of our past? Or the, now the idols, or are you going to put away with all that and, and really serve God? And how do we put away with the world and the false gods and the gods of our past and really um, in our homes, love and serve God in all these ways, in our marriage? How do we love and serve God in our marriage? Do we even think about health and how we could be loving and serving God based on our health and we should and, and can? And, and parenting, I I just got lucky. My kids are darn good, but don't think we're not, we're not perfect. But I'm just saying we lucked out my marriage. I didn't even know what equally yoked meant. Like I would think yolk would have only to do with an egg. I would mm -hmm. not, have, I, I didn't speak this way. I didn't know this world. And so, I mean, I got lucky and I just don't want people living their life on hopes and luck. I want them to really step into what we know works. And so that's what this book is about. I like, I've already kind of figured out how to help let God how to help their life. I want them, God to help them fix their home. Wow. Oh, and I don't, you know what? I think you said, what are the problems? It's because the world is speaking some, but you are following no matter what. So who are you going to follow? Because you might not think you are, but you are following no matter what. People are speaking into your heart, mind, and soul no matter what. So it's one thing or it's another. You're with me or you're against me. It's, you know, it's a yes or it's a no. And so are we. And I think we're a little clueless to that. And, and a little walking on the dangerous side where we want to please everyone and be politically correct. And we want to be just like, oh, well, I love everyone and it's all acceptable and everything's good. And I can watch this and I can eat that, but I should love myself just the way I am. And I love all that, but not at the cost of our faith and our God. And we, so we get pretty good education on what the world's telling us to do because we're, it's being screamed into our faces. Uh, it's being screamed into the schools. It's being, it's being told, but is anyone out there telling us what the Bible's saying? You know, and are we getting to church and are we, I mean, we have so much money. We have lake homes and we have things like this. And I'm just like, I, so I could get on my soapbox. I'm done. That's, that's <laughs> the answer. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. So you develop this plan, these, these six steps, and I think you've got steps within those, right? Yep. As you develop this plan for navigating life, um, well, first of all, how did you develop that? Yeah. So, so like I said, you know, God had impressed upon me um, the way to go about it. And it's, it's really tucked in my first book. And that is consider the problem, consider the word, consider the gift, consider the choice. And that's really the four-step process that I use for almost all of my coaching. So, you know, when you're looking at your home, I wanted to look at what are the problems that we have in our homes? What are the barriers of our homes? And so I did a Google search and I looked to see what is searched the most in terms of like counseling and whatever for families. And so it was money. So finances, and one section is, as for me, my finances, it was marriage. So I took those hot topics, and those are the six topics that are really struggling in the world today and affect our homes. And then what I did was, so those are the problems. Then I went and I looked at what the word tells us. And so I never want anyone, I'm pretty clear about it. I'm of this operation. I let God do that work, and I'm just sort of the facilitator. So, I mean, that's what I did next is I went to the word. And I looked at whatever God was saying in the Bible about our homes, our finances, our marriage, our parenting, and all that. And then um, the next part is, you know, consider the gift. And I did that. That's the way the next part of the book is laid out is you get to see the blessings and how it works. Um, so that, and then last is we have free will. And I actually built into the book um, of covenants so that each family then decides what are we going to do then so they have a covenant for each section that they create together the families do um in in these areas of finance family part parenting whatever right okay so as you develop these principles which one meant the most to you personally yeah i would have to say the first one so um they go in a they in this book then the first one is you know how i decided to to set the book up but this this one is um, laid out for you, even though I use the four-step process of my company to make it for you, the reader, it's delivered in three ways. And so in every part, there's these three things happen. We first embody, then we engage, and then we elevate. And, that, and I'm coaching in people's homes now. And so embody means that we really look at what the, the verses are. So we're making these wise choices we can't say I'm going to love and don't even know what he wants us to do. And so that's, that's me telling you, teaching you what the scripture says about these places and you embodying it. Remember I said inward impression. So that's my favorite section is just you letting it come into you. And then I don't think you need to sweat it too much because you know how the word, the word works. It plants a seed in you and it just, starts to grow and it weeds out that other crap and it just gets good in there but embody is the first part and then the second part that's where you make the covenant and that's where you um like pick and choose you ask yourself questions you answer the questions you're picking and choosing where we need to change make changes and you write it up and then the last part is called elevate and that's where you can see how it's worked and there's testimonies the whole last chapter of every section is testimonies of people i've coached and it's their stories of how they partnered their home um, with god and it man it changed their life their home so one of the best things for you is when you see the reality hit the eyes oh absolutely i mean honestly that's that's not, I mean, the embody, the first part, that is my favorite part because that's what I'm here to do is get, get people to God. But it's the blessing and it's the joy of seeing their home or their life be transformed. There's nothing better. Right, right. So, I mean, you've, you've pretty much covered my question about what you hope your book will achieve. <laughs> um, well, but tell you me know what? What? I, I do have one other one. Um, I don't know if this is a future question, but to get into homes, do you have that laid out there? Because where the book is right now? Mm, no, I don't, but go ahead. Okay. So um, so I we had filmed this book in kind of like cuts of me coaching families in their homes. And it's been turned into a TV show, believe it or not. Um, but it has not been ch chosen yet. It's 
it's been waiting. Um, you sign a contract saying like, do you care if it gets turned into twisted and turned into another show similar? Do they, you have to sign over rights in case they take your idea and go get another coach to do it. Um, all these different things, but it's been turned in and we're waiting. So I will, anyone who hears this, I will take prayers and um, advice and all sorts of things. Great. Great. Well, that's, uh, you know, and that, that covered the what's next. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, can you imagine um, literally being piped in through um, the television and people's homes and people being able to see what the word tells you to do, not the world, the word tells right. you to do. I mean, oh man. And to watch, you spurred me a thinking of it because you said how joyous it is to watch the transformation. It's, it's so great. Nothing like it. Yeah, yeah, there's a Bible verse that I wish I could quote it right now. I'm so new to it, I don't, but you'll you'll know and people who are in the word will, but um, you know, it talks of faith increasing and how important it is to share your stories and how God moves in your life. And it's not just um an act of bragging and it's not um being it's not being bad to do that. It's good because when people see it, it increases their faith too. Yes. Yes. You know, that's the 12th step in, in the 12 step programs is, is having learned what I've learned, having experienced what I have. Now I share it with others. Yeah. So, yes. Absolutely. Well, Nikki, I thank you so much for sharing. Show us your book again, Embracing the Loving Legacy. And you might as well go ahead and buy Awaking the Living Legacy while you're at it. So you'll be able to mesh them together. And yeah. uh, I thank you so much for coming and sharing your passion. Absolutely. And I am honored that you even asked and I wish you nothing but the best because I know you're doing good work for the common good of everyone and for God. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye-bye.